guys, so today I'm going to be doing a video on how I do makeup for my models except on myself since we're all in quarantine and I can't really get a model to do this so I'm just going to be doing it on myself today and yeah, I'll be showing you guys how I get the really glossy looks on my models. I am not a professional makeup artist whatsoever, I have no official training, just watch some YouTube videos, kind of learn how I went along, but this is just how I do it, how I find I like doing my makeup on my models to get that really glossy look. And yeah, let's get right into it. Okay, so again, I don't know the names, like the technical names for any of these brushes. I'm just going to be showing you the brush I'm using and the product I'm using and then showing you how I apply it. Probably a lot of things are be technically wrong, but this is just how I do it. And so if you're a photographer and you don't know how to do makeup professionally at all, like as long as you're good at Photoshop really, you'll be fine. So first step is I always moisturize the lips first. I either will just use Burt's Bees Chapstick or this MAC Prep and Prime, which I find it works really well. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. First step always for me is to moisturize. I use a lot of moisturizing products on my models. So I'm using a Clarins After Sun Gel, just like any kind of lotion. And I just put that on the back of my hand. And I like to add a little bit of self-tanner to this, mainly for around like the neck, just to kind of darken their skin. And this will just kind of even it out and make them a little tan. And then I'm just going to do like my face and my arms, my neck, and my chest because that's really all that is going to be in like photos but if I'm going to be doing more of the body I will moisturize the rest of them like their belly and their, the back, the shoulders if that's going to be showing in the shots and I just use a tiny bit of that self tanner so you can't really notice too much of a difference but it will help even out the skin tone I find and then after that, we let that set for a little bit, let it just dry. Next up, I use the Forsali just rose gold elixir. I really like to moisturize the skin. And just put a little bit on the cheeks and the forehead. And the chin, just a little bit. And then give that a good rub in. If the model already has really oily skin, I won't use this, but since my skin is a bit dry, I'm going to use it. And I'm just going to let that sit a little bit. And I don't add the oil to the neck either, just the face because that is really expensive oil and they find the neck doesn't need it as much as the face does. And so next we're going to be using the Tarte uh, drink of H2O and the, oh I don't know how to say that, Maracuja? That's totally wrong and I'm so sorry for anyone I offended. <laughs> the C Brightener Eye Treatment. I'll be using this lotion and just putting it all over the face. I really like using water-based face lotions because I already use that oil and just in case I do have oily skin, you don't want to add too much oil, but moisturizing them will, I don't know, I feel like it helps protect their skins a little bit, but it's also just something I've seen in a lot of my favorite makeup artist videos is they moisturize the model's skin quite a lot before putting any products on to give it a very nice shiny. You can see I'm already really shiny. <laughs> and I'm going to use eye cream and I just use this just on the under eye. Then we let that sit and you can already see my lips are so much less chap than they were when we first started so I'm actually going to add another layer of chapstick on just because my lips are kind of chap. Well, this one's actually mine, not the one I use on models so when I do it on models I use a brush and then put it on their lips just to give everything sanitary, but this one is my personal one. Okay, and now that we've done that, I'm going to be using, again, a Tarte moisturizer. This one is Rainforest of the Sea. This one is also a primer, so it will help the makeup stay on a little bit, and just like a little bit. And this one I will also use on the neck, as my face already has quite a lot of moisturizer on it. Okay, and now we get to the actual wig foundation part. I like to use this MAC face and body foundation. It's very liquidy, very glossy, it's light coverage so you might need a heavier coverage. And I have the palest one they have that's a cold tones because I find it's much easier to add warm tones to someone's makeup than it is to take away, especially if they're very pale. You don't want them to look orange. And to fit it to people's um, skin tones, what I'll do is I will put it on the back of my hand. And then I have another foundation which is a Sephora, this one's thicker. This one's actually my summer foundation, and I will add a little bit of this because this one is a bit pinkier while this one is quite cold. As well as doing that, I'm, since I have very yellow skin, I'm also going to be adding the Bare Minerals 
neutralizer, it's a face primer to this, just to add a little bit of yellow as well. And then I'm going to be adding the Glam Glow Glow Starter Mega Illuminating Moisturizer as well. This just kind of will add some more pink tones and a little bit of shine, and that's kind of what it looks like before I mix it together. I just mix this together on the back of my hand, making sure it's similar to my skin tone. And then I'm just going to put that on my face before I blend it in with a brush. And this will also be used on my neck and my body. And since I do use brushes instead of like a beauty blender, most of this will be taken up by the brush. I don't know what kind of brush this is, but it's like a flat little blending brush. I find it works the best for doing foundation and just blending this in. When I do it, I dab and then kind of pull away instead of just like smearing or I will go in little circles and dab a little bit. And then I'm gonna go get some from my hand and then dab it onto the neck to keep the color consistent. I always make sure to go behind the ear as well and just do that for the other side as well. I'm going to put more on my chest and right here on my inner arms because they're a bit lighter than the tops of my arms and my shoulders so they don't need as much but I'm just going to go over with the brush that has some on it on the top just to keep that color on there. I'm going to use the rest in this arm and this is hard because I am not left handed. <laughs> And now that I am all about the same color, we can start doing the contour and the highlighting and all of that stuff. And you want to make sure you let this set. So I let it set for a little bit because if you start putting anything else on it right away, it's not going to blend as well, I found. Um, while this is setting, I'm actually going to do my eyebrows. And I use the Benefit Gimme Brow, just like a darker shade. If the model has really light eyebrows, I will use mascara primer. Um, if they have really dark eyelashes, I will sometimes use mascara because I mean like this is basically just brown mascara anyway, so it doesn't really matter. I don't I don't like to color in eyebrows with like a, like an eyeshadow, like an eyebrow shadow. I like to do this instead because I like very natural eyebrows. And then just go ahead and do this to both sides. I also really like the look of eyebrows. Like, I don't know, that is set a little bit more. I'm going to go in. I'm going to be using a NARS. It's a little concealer. I don't use very much of this because I don't like how it look too cakey. But I'll go in with this and kind of just get rid of the fact that they have any like red spots or in here it's still kind of pinky, but mainly just a little bit underneath the eye. And then I typically blend that with my finger or a medium sized little fluffy brush. But I find that dabbing it with my finger works the best and the less, less brushes for me to clean at the end of the day. And so right now I definitely don't have very much color in my face because we just put all that foundation over to just get a nice even skin tone. So I will be using, my favorite contour right now is some of the Fenty Beauty, the little matchsticks I believe they're called. I love using the amber one. It's very cold tone. It works on almost any fair skin tone or medium skin tone because it is very, it's very cold. I'm gonna go in right on my cheekbone up here, put a few dashes, and go across the forehead, as well as under the jawline, and then put a line right here, and then I will do collar ones, but right now I'm gonna do my face. And then again, back with this brush, and just blend in small little circles, blending that. And these blend in so well with that, the base of all the cream foundations and all the moisturizers, it blends in very smoothly and very well. I've always had on my face that this side never blends very well and I have no idea how to fix that, but well, this side blends quite nicely. This side doesn't like me ever. And then we're gonna go in underneath the jaw and blend this in to accentuate my jawline. And you wanna try and blend this in as much as you can. And you can tell I look very cold tone because I'm using a lot of cold tones on my face and I will be adding a lot of blush in a little bit, but right now I am very cold tone because I would rather be kind of cold looking than orange personally. And then we're gonna go in and put this underneath the collarbones and over top. I 
as well. I'm just gonna blend this side in first and then I'll blend it the other side. You wanna blend in over top of the collarbone and underneath to make it pop out more. And I blend that down just a little bit. It'll show up more on camera than it will in person. And the good thing with contour is if you you get the makeup done, you take a few photos, you look to make sure it looks good, and you notice that it's not as strong of a contour as you want, you can just go and add more. In my opinion, it's better to add more contour in person than to use a heavy dodge and burn layer, just because dodge and burn is great to an extent, but after a little while, it, it starts to look kind of fake. Next, we're going to do blush. And this is my favorite blush of all time. It's just like a little Sephora blush to go number. 03 Miss Spicy. Unfortunately, they don't make these anymore. So I think Milk has some very similar ones or just find any stick blush. I find that these are the best. And when you're putting this on, you don't want to put it on like the contour because it will ruin your contour and make it splotchy. So what I do is I take the same brush. So you're just gonna go and get it on there and then dab it on. And I take the blush all the way up, all the way up the cheekbone. And you're just going to dab this on. You don't want to do little swirls or anything because that will start ruining the contour underneath. Also, we'll put it a little bit over the nose and dab a tiny bit on the eyelids as well just to give it a little more color. I love using blush. It's like my favorite thing right now. I don't know why, but it is. I'm going to let that sit for a little bit and then we're going to do the highlight. Before I do the highlight, I'm just gonna like clean my brush off a little bit on a paper towel. And now we're gonna do the highlight. And again, I'm using another Sephora, one of those matchsticks. This one is called Glow Stay Curly Illuminizer Wet Finish. I love this one. I will also use a gold one if I want a more gold tone, but this one is just clear, just straight shimmer and all that. And again, the same technique as a blush. I'm gonna really get this on this brush and then I'm going to dab it on. I'm going to dab it on here, and then I'm going to take more, and then put it on the other side. And then I'm going to go and dab it up here as well, and on the eyelids. I love a good glossy eyelid. Um, if you want really insanely glossy eyelids, I recommend using just clear lip gloss. And then I'm going to take my finger put it somewhere here and don't smear you want to dab it you want to make sure you get quite a bit on the bridge of the nose because it does look really nice when it's highlighted very nicely and as well as underneath the eyebrows and then we're gonna put a bunch of this on the collarbones it doesn't have to be just on the collarbones you want to kind of put it around them underneath a little bit on the chest and as well as right here and then same kind of on the shoulders I had a little bit on the arm because if everything up here is super glossy it looks really weird when the arms aren't in my opinion on the arms, I feel like you can use powdered uh, highlighter, just not on the face. Okay, and now we're almost done. You just have to do the eyes, and then that is it. And the eyes are normally the only time I will use powder. Normally, I will use the Tarte Clay Play palette. I just love this palette to death. So I'm going to take a little tiny brush. I'm pretty sure this is actually a lipstick brush, but it works for me. And I'm going to take this one right here, Stone. I'm going to just put a little bit under my eye. And then blend it with my finger just a tiny bit. And then I'm going to take a, I don't know, like a medium sized fluffy brush like this and I'm going to get this one journey right here and also Instinct, which is a little bit of the sparklier one. Tap that off and then try and get that in the crease. And you want to dab this very lightly because if you don't, it's going to get blotchy with all of the moisturizing just stuff on my skin. Like everything that's wet will wash this if you are not careful. You just go with the crease. I have kind of a weak crease on my eyes. This is better to think if the model you're using has a it's just like a larger eye. And then that's on there. And I'm going to wipe this brush off so that I can completely blend that in. Because right now it's looking a little, a little bit darker than I want it to look. And then I'm just gonna blend that. 
And again, if it's a little bit darker than you want to, it's going to show up lighter on camera. That's just something that I found with pretty much anything is gonna show up lighter on camera. It's kind of annoying, but that's just how it works for whatever reason. Next, I'm going to actually add a little bit of this blush on the same brush I was just using. And I'm going to put this on my eyelids. I don't know why I am really obsessed with the like, pink eyelid look right now. It's one of my favorite looks to do with models when they're doing their test shoot because it's natural, but it also adds like a little bit of kind of like a girly flare to the shoot and I'll add that a little on the underneath as well and then again just wiping this off so I can blend it in better and yes yeah, so it will look more pink in person than it will on camera and you can always desaturate it if you find it is too pink and then next we're gonna do eyelashes um, I don't use fake eyelashes I find that they look too much sometimes I will use the Lancome base mascara it's like a white little mascara and go over their eyelashes so that when I use mascara on them they will be a little bit bigger. You want to make sure you don't get too big of chunks. This is like the worst part of doing makeup for me on other people is doing the mascara. And then you let that set for a little bit. My favorite mascara right now is the Smashbox Full Exposure. I absolutely love the brush on this mascara. It doesn't clump super well. It makes the lashes super long without being really clumpy and spidery. So it's one of my favorites right now. I also really like this mascara because it is thinner than some that I've used in the past so it will keep most of the eyelashes separate and won't clump them as much. And then lastly would be the lips and I tend to use a very natural color for the lips instead of something crazy and I'll use a brush and just kind of brush it on because I don't want it to be precise. I also don't look good when lips are gone so there's that. That's a little bit kind of too purple, but it is what it is. Um, I not only add lip gloss on top of that, but since I don't look good with lip gloss, I'm not gonna put any on. And so this is just basically how I do makeup on my models. Then next would be we would just start shooting. So I think I'm gonna actually take a few photos in my studio with me with the makeup on, just like some self-portraits, and I'll show you how this turned out in photos. I'll list all the products down below, so if you wanna know everything that I use, that'll be down below in the description of this video. Again, yeah, I'm not a professional makeup artist by any means, so if I'm doing anything wrong, please let me know because I have no idea. Hey guys, so I just got done shooting all the photos for this video with the makeup I just did. It was so much fun to take some self-portraits in my little studio. I enjoyed this so much. I hope you guys did. It, make sure to hit like and subscribe if you want to see future content from me. Uh, leave a comment below if you found like my little tutorial helpful or any tips you have for the makeup. And I hope you guys enjoy seeing the photos from the shoot too. Thanks so much for watching. Bye!